we did that just because we were performers. The more you act and the more experiences you have, you learn to adapt to new situations. Probably the most important thing that I learned in acting classes that helps me as a voice actor is something called improvisation. Whereas, basically you make it up as you go along. Some people go, okay, you're in a store and you're returning this, go. And you just have to go. Um, very similar to what I do in the studio because when I, when I actually record, that is the first time I've ever seen those words in front of me. So everything I do is on the spot. So when I go into work, I don't know whether I'm going to be, you know, kissing a boy or fighting a 50-foot spider. Like, I just don't know. So I have to be ready to just do whatever is thrown on the page. And, yeah, or kissing the 50-foot spider in some cases. I, one time I was like, I, I was called in to play this character called the Legendary Sorcerer. And I was like, that sounds like an old man. And I was like, uh, are you sure you have this right? And they're like, oh yeah, he's this 75 foot baby. I was like, great. Uh, and nothing can prepare, no, no preparation in the world can prepare you for that. Are we at time? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The masquerade prep is happening as we speak behind the stage area. If you follow this lovely lady, she will show you where it is. Um, thank you. Um, but yeah, nothing can prepare you for the day you're like a, a, a robot or a baby or, you know, you just have to, you have to be able to just wing it and go with it. I say wing it as I wear wings, that's all silly. Uh, yeah, I would say act. Uh, learn as much about acting and performance as possible. Um, because right now it's not really an easy industry to break into. There's like less work than there used to be. But the fun part is the learning part. Like that's where you have the most fun, doing plays and making friends and girlfriends and boyfriends and whatever. Like that's where all that happens is in the learning process and the playing process. When it's a job, a day-to-day -day job, it's not quite as much fun. So yeah, learn as much as you can and act every possibility you have, definitely. Yeah. She asked, what was my reaction to the first episode of Dead Men Wonderland? And it really doesn't give much away because I've already said what happens in the beginning. I was told the brief outline of what was going to happen. And I knew that at some point, very quickly, this kid was going to lose everybody. Like his best friend, his girlfriend, everybody right in front of him. I thought they would have at least given a whole episode to learning that, within the first five minutes of his show, everyone that he knows is murdered right in front of him. And I was just like, I, I couldn't believe that it happened that quick. And it was also, those few minutes were the last few minutes that I would not be crying for the rest of the show. Uh, so I was, I was blown away by the intro and how quickly everything happened and how fast the story starts. It's just really, it's a really neat, show for that reason. There's not, okay. episode three is a little low, but there's not really not a lot of dead space in the show. Uh, it's it's a pretty fast moving show from the very start. So yeah, I was as stunned as most people are when I saw the first episode, definitely. Yeah. Huh? Oh yeah, but it can't do it right now, but I'll do it afterwards. Yeah, totally. I just did that forever downstairs, but it's cooler up here. So I'll be glad to do it here or at the, at the door. Most people, like, I've been talking about how much I love the weather here. I have to explain, I left 100 degree weather. So this is beautiful weather. And it was 100 degrees for like a week. So this is, I got off the plane and I was like, I was in shorts and I was like, oh, this is beautiful. So, yeah. I have not been to Greg's. But technically my place could be called Greg's, so I've been there. No, what is Greg's? Is it a restaurant or a bar? Oh, and he said my favorite word. He just said pasty, so if yes, I will have to well, how far away is it close by? Okay, I will definitely try to make a point to get to Greg's. That was fun. Yeah. That's in fact what I did for lunch. Like um, we had a choice of a lot of different things for lunch, and I said, I just want to do something around here. Because I'm really, like, this is the most ridiculously short trip I've ever taken. I'm, I slept what little bit I wasn't drinking last night. 
and I'm gonna go to sleep tonight and wake up tomorrow and I'm gonna stay up all night so I can catch my flight and leave. So uh, I want to see as much around here. I really love Middlesbrough from what I've seen. I really love it. So I want to catch it as much as I possibly can before I leave. So Greg's is now on the list. Yeah. And I haven't been to a pub yet. We went to the bar at the hotel, but it's not the same thing. So I definitely want to go to a pub and get like real pub food and all that. Yeah. <laughs> ghost stories. She asked about ghost stories. Uh, I I just recently turned a whole bunch of my friends on to the show again. That had ne they don't even like anime, and now they're like in hysterics watching it constantly. For those of y'all that haven't seen it, it's this show called Ghost Stories. <laughs> Yeah, she's like, I've seen it. This one is broken. I didn't realize until I started moving. This one, this would be, I, I'll favor this. If I was crying, I'd be favoring this side, definitely. But Frederick came back. He's back there now. Um, I'm getting caught up on where our friend is. Uh, I just totally lost. Oh, ghost stories. Um, this, oh, okay. Um, this. The show was a show that they spent a lot of money on, actually, and it was beautifully animated. The problem was, and this is probably the biggest argument for a good scriptwriter, the problem was it just wasn't real well written, and it turned into kind of a Scooby-Doo type, like, children's thing. It really wasn't... If they were trying to get a teenage audience, but they were really shooting for like an eight-year-old audience. I mean, it, like, it just got pigeonholed as a children's cartoon, and then that was the end of it. Well. As with anything in Japan, the way they keep shows going is they sell it to the, you know, the U.S. and, and you know, South America, and like they sell it into different territories to make more money. And no one would buy this show. <laughs> no one wanted this show. No, not a single person wanted it. And um, because ADB took a lot of niche projects, they said, well, what about this show? You know, what what would make this show funny? And I think the answer was it would have to be a different show for it to be funny. And they said, what if we said you could do whatever you want to this show? Anything. And originally, the idea of altering or maiming an anime to anime fans is blasphemy. Like, I mean, imagine someone like going, here's a show called Evangelion, do whatever you like with it. You know, that's sacrilege. But this was not a work of art. This was like a pile of sick, basically. Um, and what we did, we had rules within the changing of the show. The rules were we had to stick to the basic premise of that episode because it's all based on Japanese and Chinese ghost legends. So we had to stick with all of that. We had to keep our names, like the names had to be the same. The names of all the ghosts 